Have you ever given one of your players an awesome legendary magical item and kind of regretted it a little later? <laughs> That's okay because I did, uh, but there are definitely ways to work around it. Today we're going to be talking about how to nerf or modify existing items in your campaign. Welcome to the Homebrew Crew, I'm Sean, this is Tony, and today we're going to be talking about uh, giving your players magical items and possibly having to modify or even nerf them if you have to. I know what that's like. Yeah, it's not It's not fun. It's kind of like giving a baby candy <laughs> and then breaking the candy in half and then giving them the other half. And you feel guilty about it. I gotta tell you, we. Um, I had a thing where I actually gave a lot of my players a bunch of magic items early on in the campaign and that was a huge <laughs> mistake. Yeah, it can essentially kind of snowball into this issue where there's a power creep uh, problem and then it can even potentially make the campaign a little less enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest problem with it is that you, it's not so much that they have it and you have to work around it as a DM. You have this ability to, okay, up the monster's strength or do that. Mm -hmm. But I think the biggest problem comes in is as the DM, how do you, how do you just take that thing, nerf it, and then not feel guilty about it? Because yeah. you do that a lot. Exactly. You know? And I have a perfect story. Uh, so I have a bit of a story for everyone here. Um, in my campaign, uh, there's a point where one of my parties uh, ended up capturing a region in the map. And I wanted to give them an awesome war because it was not easy to do it. It took them literally real six months of game we, time to get we it. We did good. They, it, did it took good. Us, they did good. It took good. us a long time, but we did good. Yeah, um, so I wanted to give them Black Razor. And for those who don't know, we're going to go ahead and pull up Black Razor on the screen here. It's basically this awesome legendary weapon. It's a it's a great sword, but I turned it into a long sword. And it can it can give you health, and, and it gives you advantage, and it can give you haste, and it does all these amazing, awesome things. It's one of the three uh, yeah. swords that actually has uh, an, an emotion and a... Presence itself right, it's that's in your DM's guide. It's, the only, it's one of the three sentient swords. Exactly. And that being said, it's probably one of the best weapons in the official book content. Mm -hmm. um, I gave this to one of our players. Um, and, of course, party was very excited. The player was very excited. And they start using it. Um, and mind you, the average level that my party's at is about 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. And they, I gave them a legendary item. So they start slaying some creatures. I even toss some tougher creatures at them. And before you know it, I have this level 12, level 11 character who's walking around with 258 <laughs> temporary hit points. And they're basically invincible. That's because, you know, with Black Razor on it, it does, what's the, what's the actual hit points with that? I mean, yeah, what so, it so the way it works is whenever you actually kill something and you devour the soul, Black Razor grants you temporary hit points equal to the slain creature's hit point maximum. Um, now, it has to be you doing the killing. Right, that's important. That's, thing. You have to be the final blow. Yeah. Um, so with a little bit of coordination, this isn't too tricky. Uh, the important thing is um, you get the total maximum hit points. So if you're tossing a creature with 100, 150 hit points, Mm -hmm. They're going to get that full maximum as temporary hit points. Um, it lasts for 24 hours, and as long as they have the hit points, they actually get advantage on attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. Not to mention Black Razor itself is there uh, constantly telling you kill, kill, kill. For right, me. it's hungry <laughs> for souls. So it's you're encouraging your player to go out and kill stuff. Yeah. And the problem I kept running into is that this player that had Black Razor was virtually unstoppable. I could not kill this player no matter right. what. Right, because and, yeah. and many of your monsters have tried to kill this player. I've tried, <laughs> and, and, of, and I don't know if it was on purpose or if it was just sad mishappenstance, but the, that player would always land the final blow, and they would always get the points, and then I'm at this point where like, well, I guess I'll try and kill everyone else, you know? Right. Um, but admittedly, uh, part of that, most of it, if anything, was my fault, if anything. Um, you know, a lot of the times you might get excited to give your players these awesome, great items, um, but you have to be careful when you're trying to balance out your campaign. I gave a level 11 player a legendary magical item, an item that's really built for late game stuff. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, Black Razor's, what, 15 to 17 and yeah. above with it. It's yeah, it's pretty good. I, right. It's really, really awesome. Um, but it, I noticed you said that it was it was your fault as the DM. Yeah, yeah. I, that That <laughs> honestly is one of the biggest issues with ever doing this is that you as a DM feel like either A, you let your players down a little bit by making it too easy because as you're watching this person kill everybody and getting these temporary hit points and nothing's happening to this person, your other players are kind of sitting there going, mm -hmm. 
you know, like, okay, well, what are we going to do? Um, at the same time, you don't want to go, hey, you remember that awesome sword that I gave you? <laughs> right. Yeah, give me that back. Right. You don't want yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's a problem, you know? Yeah. So yeah. How, how do you handle this? I know how I handle it, but how do you handle it? Well, company? it only took about two or three sessions in with this new item where I was like, okay, I can tell this <laughs> like, is going to be a bit no, of an issue. No, no, no. All right. um, so <laughs> I spent some downtime when we weren't playing to kind of figure out how can I potentially adjust this item and, you know, not, you know, disappoint the player. Um, so I, and when you do this, you kind of have to look at everything as a whole. You have to look at how your campaign is set up. Mm -hmm. You have to look at how you set up your encounters. Is this a difficult campaign? Is this an easy campaign? Um, uh, in my case, I tend to make combat pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, so I set it up where, uh, I changed Black Razor to be whenever, uh, it, something that it hits dies, um, the player can choose to take those temporary hit points, um, but instead of getting the maximum, it gets the hit points that it dealt in damage to the creature. Which Black Razor, Black Razor, it's now Jezebel. Right, because, uh, you know, <laughs> flavor changes. Um, it's not a, hey, I only did a small amount of damage kind of thing. I mean, it, it does a pretty good amount of damage, Right, too. it has potential to do a lot of damage, yeah. you know, especially. Um, so by making this change, uh, essentially it kind of limits the player to, you know, only dealing the amount of damage that they do, uh, which still encourages them to go in there and, and attack with it, because now, like, oh, if I only get the, that health back, I gotta go in there and attack it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one ruling that I did is if you, you know, if another creature dies that you dealt damage to it, it doesn't stack. You well, either take temporary hit points. Right, and don't, they don't normally stack. So, yeah, so you either works. keep the ones that you have, or now you can take the new temporary hit points. Um, I still kept the whole thing where you know it's, it keeps the advantage on attack rolls and saving throws and ability checks. I didn't want to completely take that away. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we haven't even really tried this out a lot. Um, the important thing is, though, it's, it's a change that I had to make to, to my campaign to kind of keep everything balanced. And when I made this, I, I talked to the player and I actually told the whole party about it. Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, you know, I think everyone was okay with the change. Um, we're going to see how it kind of goes in the long term run. Uh, but I think it's important to note that when you're making these changes, um, you know, you kind of have to take a lot into consideration, but also be honest with your players. Sure. And I think you can also incorporate the thematic portions of it like mm -hmm. the like you know you want to have a reason to your players um in the storyline why the change has occurred to that weapon or that thing it's a great way to actually do it so your players are not upset by it if um you know you can make it and i've seen this happen a couple times where i've taken a powerful item i've given to somebody mm -hmm. and you nerf it down but then you give them an option to get back to that original state. Yeah. And it's it's kind of like, okay, well, and you know that it's going to take a long time. But it's a good way of doing that if you've given those things to a person way too early. Yeah. And that's, that's you know, it's like I, my campaign was so screwed up. I, you know, I started with and I, I liked, I don't know, I was kind of the, the DM attention hog with it. <laughs> what I liked was when my players like lit up as to how like awesome they thought these new items and these things were and that was cool but i kept like giving them stuff just to make sure that you know they kept coming and kept playing right right kind and of the, the, next the, the thing carrot you know, in front of the horse ideology right yeah. <laughs> yeah well i didn't realize that the horse had this whole like bag of carrots <laughs> that was sitting there yeah. and anything i threw at them at that point like it, it got to so bad that they took down the demogorgon in like maybe five rounds right and i'm like ah Okay, well, we're going to have to rehash this. I ended up scrapping my whole campaign and starting over. Right. And and honestly, that is a potential problem. I mean, mm -hmm. if you need to make one change to an item to save the rest of your campaign, do it. Yeah. Um, and th the cool thing is you can do a lot of things when you're making homebrew changes to items. You can take things away. You can um, add things. Um, for legendary items, I actually had this idea where um, I'll, usually a legendary item will have like five or six different features, mm -hmm. make it so that they're unlocked over time or added like some kind of level yeah. and tier system to the item. So Black Razor, for example, maybe at first it can devour souls, but maybe it can't get you the temporary hit points level. Maybe right. you have to get to a certain level and then maybe later on, then you'll get the, where you can add haste, you know, so you can kind of add. Yeah, this. and it can be tied to, you know, how long you've actually yeah, been with that item. Yeah, a bonding system for yeah. the item too. So there's a lot of things you can do to kind of adjust the item <laughs> while still making it that awesome item and balancing your campaign. Yeah.
I think this is I, uh, I I hope that this has been helpful for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I think this <laughs> this is something that that DMs run into all the time. I know a lot of people have already talked about it before, but this is I think the easiest way to handle that is to just not be afraid to take that nerf bat. Absolutely. And this is whether or not you're running a homebrew campaign or even if you're running something out of the book. If you feel like you've given something too early or if you feel like just something's not right, you are at your leisure to make changes as you see it. You are the DM. You have that control. So go mm-hmm. ahead. Make the change, <laughs> you know, and, and just work with your players and, you know, just see how it goes. And truth be told, a lot of players will always be, like, totally okay with it. I mean, I've never actually seen somebody completely blow up about making a small change. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It could still happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's that's kind of how it. That's kind of how you work with it. I mean, I don't think. I think between the idea of okay, we got to make this slight little change, and I'm not playing anymore. Mm-hmm. I think most players are like more inclined to just go, okay, well, that's fine. I understand why it's a, an issue. Yeah. So. Exactly. Um, well, hopefully, uh, you'll be able to make changes to your campaigns <laughs> as needed. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to us if you already haven't. We have a ton of content over coming there. up. <laughs> um, and we're always actually welcome to people sending us your own homebrew content. Or if you're having issues in your campaign, mm-hmm. please send us an email. You can go and send it to the email below. Uh, it's dmbrewcrew at gmail.com. Uh, we check it very often. And we're always here to help or uh, help make tweaks to uh, your stuff or your issues. And don't forget, you can find us on our Discord channel now that yeah. we just started up. Uh, we've got our own personal moderator on there as well. Yeah. And uh, it. She, I mean, she's doing great, and I think we've had a good uh, number of chats going in there, too. And it could potentially be probably the fastest way to get to us. It's Mm -hmm. instant. We check it all the time. And if you want to talk to us or ask us questions, I highly recommend heading over there and uh, hitting us up. Yeah, we might even do a... a, a an evaluation of a a home-brewed item or something directly on there Mm -hmm. with something that you have. So either way, remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are home-brewed. So until next time, keep keep brewing. brewing.